In today's show, we're looking at buy low and sell high options in fantasy basketball. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. This episode is brought to you by Truebill. Truebill is the new app that saves you money by helping you identify and stop paying for the subscriptions you don't want or need and can even negotiate better deals on those that you want to keep. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. We are here today to talk buy lows and sell highs. A reminder, a buy low trade is someone who's underperforming. You try and see if you can get them in a trade. Don't pay anywhere close to what you expect their value to be rest of season. If you don't get the trade, you don't get it. A sell high is someone who's outperforming what they're doing. You might take a short-term hit on a trade like that. But when you're looking two weeks, three weeks, four weeks down the track, you end up winning. A a sell high is not selling someone close to what you think they're going to be in a month. If you, you don't have to do trades, you don't have to acquire these buy low players. You don't have to sell these sell high players. You need to see whether you get value. And in a lot of cases with sell high guys, number one name that comes to mind is someone like Jonas Valanciunas. You just write it out. You just enjoy the production and we'll see where it goes after that. But here are some options that I think that we can uh, entertain. Let's start by looking at some sell highs. And let's start with your mate in Milwaukee, Punch Bob Shiploke himself, Bobby Portis. Portis, over the last two weeks, is the 34th ranked player in category leagues. He's 51st in points leagues. It seems pretty obvious that he's a sell high, but I'll tell you why I'm including him on this list. It's because there have been multiple people Right, that have mentioned to me or, or asked me or tweeted at me or whatever, commented, hey, are they, do you think the Bucks will just keep Portis in as the starting center when Brook Lopez returns? Portis can keep this up. Yeah, Lopez will probably just play a backup role. I don't think that'll be the case. And even if it is, and I think it will be initially, I think uh, Portis will start over Lopez initially. Bobby's not going to, A, play 32 minutes a night while, while Lopez gets here, you know, 20 Um, And he's also not going to shoot 49% from three. So that is going to drop what Bobby can do. In this time, he's averaging 18 and nine with 2.7 triples. Of course, he's still got anemic steals, anemic blocks, no assists. He's shooting 55 from the field, propped up by that high three-point percentage. Now, he was an unbelievable three-point shooter last year. And I thought there's no way it could continue. And it's actually not basically continued. The last two weeks are better than last year. Over the course of the season, he is lower. But we don't expect 49%. Look, if he has a stretch where he's a 39% shooter, that's still great, but it drops off a lot from where he is. And I think you should be looking at Portis as a player who's a fringe, fringe top 100 guy the rest of the way. Now, if you can get any sort of, in category leagues, any sort of top 60 player back in a trade, I think it's a win. In a points league, if you can get a top 75 player back in a trade, I think it's a win. Lopez, Portis is going to play 24 to 26 minutes, I would guess. Backup center, backup power forward. But I don't think he's playing 32, nor do I think he is going to shoot 49% from three. That is obviously a really high amount. I think Keldon Johnson's a sell high. And I'll tell you again, a couple of reasons why. There are plenty of people who are much bigger believers in Keldon Johnson than I am. They might look at what he's currently doing and say he's the 94th ranked player over the last two weeks, which he is, and 83rd in in, in points leagues, again, which he is. They might not dig deeper into that to figure out what's going on. Remember, Jakob Pertl has been out. So that has meant that there have been a few extra minutes for Kelden. He was getting like 30, 29 to 30. He's playing 32 at the moment. That's not a big difference, but it is at least marginally there. But the big reason is a guy that's a terrible three-point shooter is shooting 61% from three over the last five games. This is a guy that, yeah, at best, you can expect 32, 33% from three, I would guess. But he's shooting 61 that's that number's not going to continue. He's still getting 0.4 blocks, 0.8 steals, under three assists. He's shooting just 69% from the free throw line. Giggity! Which is not that far off what he usually does. 
but he's being propped up by three pointers. Remember what three pointers do? They influence three categories. Points, three pointers made in field goal percentage. Johnson, over the course of the season, is the 133rd ranked player. I think that that's probably yeah about you know, the back end of a 12 team league. That's sort of about where he sits. But if you can squeeze a top 100, top 110 guy for him, which plenty of people thought he would be top 100 before the season began. If you can squeeze that out of whoever wants to get him, who actually believes in him and doesn't look into that ridiculous three-point shooting, uh, I'd be doing it. If you, if you can only get a top 130 player back, you don't worry about it. But if you can get a top 100 guy back, in a points league, you can get a top 90 player back. I think that's the move that you've got to do. Let's go to Dallas now. The burner himself, Jalen Brunson. Yes, some people will see through this one, no doubt, because yeah, Luka Doncic is out. Doncic has only missed two games. It's not just the games that Doncic has missed that has elevated Brunson to this level. He's playing 33 minutes a night over the last seven games. The two things that really stand out to me are seven assists per game and 90% from the free throw line. His usage is basically the same. It hasn't really changed. He's getting an extra three minutes a night, but it's the five assists going to seven assists, which again, on the, on the surface, you don't really look at that. You might look at his scoring numbers and go, oh, well, that's because of Doncic, but the assists is what's risen. And 90%, like he's a good free throw shooter, but he's 80% for the season. All right, that is a big jump. And unlike three point percentage, free throw percentage is not a three category influencer, but it is a two category one. The more free throws you hit, the more your free throw percentage goes up and the more your points go up. So there's three things there. Assists, free throws, and minutes for Brunson that are going to put, yeah, push his numbers high. He's the 48th ranked player over the last two weeks and 52nd in points leagues. Should you consider him a top 100 guy? Yeah, pretty close to it. I, th I think that's about the right area for him rest of season. He's 80th over the course of this year. Like, But if you can get a top 75 player in a trade, I think that's a pretty big win even though you know, you're know you selling based on or you're selling and losing a bit of production over what he's done over the last two weeks. I think that that should be a move you look into. Doncic will return. It is only a two-game week as well, um, which might make it a little bit harder to sell him because people may not want to acquire him with only two games. <clears throat> but remember, they're on low-volume days, so you can actually play those guys two times this week as opposed to some three-game teams who don't play a game on a low-volume day. Um, but it is worth investigating, I think for sure, to see if there is any value that you can uh, that you can get from old mate Jalen uh, Jalen Brunson. Did that noise even go off? No, maybe not. Let's try again. Nah, it didn't go off. What's going on? Let's try again. There we go. Do you know what that sound is? That is the sound of sales. It is the sound of another sale going through on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, startups, and established businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online, in-person sales, and effortlessly, effortlessly stay informed. I love how Shopify has all the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down the street to around the globe. Shopify powers over 1.7 million businesses from first sale to full scale, reaching customers online and across social networks with an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. It allows you to gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting of conversion rates, profit margins, and beyond. So go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA right now. Shopify.com slash locked on NBA. All right, Shopify will work a lot smoother than me trying to play that sound effect, I'll tell you now. All right, let's go to another bloke who is a bit of a sell high. No, my son is also named Bort. Yeah, Lou Dort, we uh, elaborated on him the other day. He's the 51st ranked player in category leagues at the moment over the last two weeks. He's averaging 33 uh, minutes a game and 21 points per game. How is the 21 points going? Well, it's pretty obvious here. 52% from the field and 67% from two-point range. We saw in the last couple of games those numbers start to drop off. And we talked about this in the I Request elaboration, just how much his two-point percentage had jumped up and how unbelievable his uh, finishing at the rim had been. 
those sort of numbers, they're just unlikely to stick for a guy that historically has not been a good finisher or a good mid-range shooter. And we've started to see that fall off now. But again, Dort has a lot of name brand recognition. The production's been strong. If you can get Dort, I would think for any top 100 player, and he's 101st over the course of the season, any top 100 player, I would consider doing that because I just don't think... Well, I know that he's top currently he's ranked 101st for the season. Those numbers are fueled by this two-week stretch of almost top 50 play. And otherwise, he's going to push back to be 130, 140. That level of efficiency from Lou Dort is just not expected. Usage, sure. Minutes, no worries. But he's not getting steals. doesn't get blocks. doesn't get assists. doesn't get rebounds. So if the shooting falls away to where it's been in previous years... And yeah, we can bake a big improvement into that. And I think he will have an improvement, but not at that level. The swimmer, Jordan Poole. 60th ranked player over the last two weeks, 94th in points leagues. 31 minutes a game. 26 usage. They're the two things that stand out. Clay Thompson is likely to return on Christmas. Now, I've been telling you that I don't expect Clay to have a big impact for fantasy this season, and I would be loath to draft him. He'll be on minutes limits. He'll be on back-to-back -back restriction limits. All that stuff will be a problem for Clay. His game has never been you're massively robust for fantasy anyway outside of points threes with good field goal percentage. Yeah, will he have enough minutes and usage to bump those things up? I don't know. But what I do know is that I find it hard to see Jordan Poole remaining starting. He'll move to the bench, uh, playing 31 minutes a night and getting 26 usage. Now, the usage might fall to 24. The minutes might go to 27. Right? They're not gigantic drop-offs. But Poole will not remain as a top 60 player. That's, that's, I think, pretty clear. Now, if you do sell him, you are going to lose in the short term. I would look at Jordan Poole as a guy that... Look, he's the 57th ranked player for the course of the season as well. So this is not even him outperforming season numbers. Like, he's bang on where he's been all year. I would expect him to be like the 110th guy, probably, once Clay is back or from now on to the rest of the season. So if I can get a top 80 player back, a top 90 player back for Jordan Poole, understanding that over the next four to five weeks, I probably lose. But once we head into February... January, March, fantasy playoffs that I have got most likely a better player. Now, there's a risk involved in that because you could trade for a guy who you think is going to be this top 70 player and then they get hurt or they look shit house or they get traded. And then you go, Fuck, I wish I kept Jordan Poole. But I still think that it's, yeah, it's not one of those where I go, you have to get rid of Jordan Poole. I happily write it out because there is a chance that he still plays 30 off the bench and still is a top 80 player. There is a chance of that. I don't think it's a high chance, but there is a chance of that. But if I can turn him into someone who is maybe struggling, one of the, the buy low guys that we're going to talk about later on, and you want to switch him for a big man, we're going to talk about a big man in a second. There is some options there that you can you know, make that trade, take a maybe a short-term hit, and then win out once 2022 rolls around. Let's look at buy low players now. Now, this one is an interesting one. And again, People will be like, Josh, no one's doing this. And I, I just tell you, it's not because of one person saying something. Yeah, I get multiple people that mention these things. Jakob Pertl, and there's a couple of things that play into this. Jakob Pertl's been out for two weeks with COVID, right? Um, he's played one game in the last two weeks. He had two points and two rebounds. So therefore, he's the 424th ranked player and 315th in points leagues. You throw those numbers in the bin, right? That doesn't matter. But a couple of things. Jakob Pertl is not an established, well-known name. He's not an established, well-known fantasy player. He's, he's just not. He's 104th over the course of this season. So despite, we, I think he's had a great year start. 104th is not particularly great. He's only played um, eight games. And one of them was that stinker there. That's dropped his numbers down. But you look at it with him being not an established player. The fact that some people thought that he would see minutes reduced as they are oh, getting some success with Thad Young playing there. Um, that they think that he's not going to be this big part of what they do. And the fact that if you can find a panicking manager who is worried about the Spurs only playing two games this week, so many managers... Now, you know the guys in your in your league. Look if the guy in your league has Pirtle, if they're one of those real short-term thinkers. I think Jakob Pirtle can be a top 70 player this year. I think it's going to take a little bit of time to get back there. But if you can get him for a top 100 guy... Look, I think, and as I just referenced this, if you traded Jordan Poole for Yucca Pirtle, you lose in the short term, and I think you win massively in the long term. But that is, of course, in a category league, it's a trade that 
is very, very different because you're, t- you're trading points and threes for rebounds, blocks, and field goal percentage. And that can dramatically alter your team. But have multiple people. Man, I need to get a big man. Who can I sell pool for? This is the guy. This is the guy that I think is the trade that you want in that sort of situation. So it's not about that one game back from COVID. It's about that. It's about not having name recognition. It's about the two-game week coming up. It's about people maybe not recognizing just how good he is. I think Brandon Ingram's also a bit of a buy low. Ingram is the 102nd ranked player over the last two weeks, 76th in points leagues. And there's some really, really obvious signs as to why. It's obvious to me. It might be obvious to you. It's not obvious to everyone. He's shooting 37.6% from the field. That's shocking for him, right? It's, it's not good. I think he's a, probably a borderline top 50 player this year. He has not registered a single steal in the last five games, and he has one block in that time. He's still averaging almost 20 points. He's hitting, or getting four and a half assists with five and a half rebounds. He's at 38% from three, but he just can't hit any twos. 38% from two. He's shooting better from three than he is from two. He's usually just at 31, and that probably does drop off when Zion, if Zion, whenever the hell Zion actually returns. But I'm just looking at that going, he's not a zero steals player. He's not a 0.2 blocks player. All right, there's going to be an increase there. He's not a 37% shooter. That's going to increase. Ingram, you look at him as a top 50 player. If you can get him as a top 70 player in a trade, top 80 player, I think that's the sort of move that you need to do. Let's go to Sacramento. Budrick Heald. 190th ranked player, but he is over the last two weeks, 150th in points leagues. Now, you might be listening to this after Monday's game and we'll see what Alvin Gentry does. Does Heald start? I'm not even worried about that. I'm just looking at this and going, well, Buddy Heald is not a 57% free throw shooter. And 57% limited attempts, no, no doubt, one attempt per game over the last seven games. He never gets to the line. But that's, that's a big negative. He's also shooting 37% from the field. Just 36% from three. And Heald, if one thing we know, he's a 40% three-point shooter. He also has like two steals uh, over the last seven games. He's not the highest of steals, guys, but he has had years where he's been like 1.4. So there's three things there that look pretty obvious that are going to increase. Do I think Buddy Heald's a top 50 player? Like not remotely close. Can he sniff the ass of the top 100? Maybe, probably, almost definitely. He's 96 this season in 28 minutes a night. It might be it might be hard because people might be thinking, well, now there's a new coach. They're going to unleash Shield and play him 35 minutes a night. I don't think that's necessarily the case at all. I just look at those numbers and go, they're not going to stick at that level for um, uh, for old Budrick Heald. I just don't think they're going to remain that low in that uh, in that sort of volume for him. But it is time now for me to tell you about Truebill. Do you know that free trials renew without your consent? It's a business scam to get you and get your money. Don't let greedy corporations pocket your money. You can download Truebill to take control of your subscriptions. Truebill is the new app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions that you don't need, want, or you simply forgot about. On average, people save up to $720 a year with Truebill because companies make subscriptions hard to cancel. Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts and Truebill will cancel your unwanted subscriptions in one tap. Truebill has over 2 million users and has helped them save over $100 million. So don't fall for subscription scams. Start cancelling today at Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. Go right now, Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash LockedOnNBA. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models of cars, it's impossible for a local chain auto parts store to stock everything that you would need. And... When you go there, you're going to have to face seemingly intimidating questioning, waiting for the guy behind the counter, and then he's going to charge you more money just so he can provide you the brand that his warehouse happens to carry. Get out of here. RockAuto.com is a family business serving online auto parts customers for over 20 years. Why would you spend up to 30, 50, 70, even 100% more for the same parts when you can get them straight from RockAuto.com? Whether it's brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, or even new carpet, Rock Auto has everything you need to help fix your own car. So go to rockauto.com now, check out all of their amazing catalog, the great range of products for your car or truck, and in their How Did You Hear About Us box, right, locked on so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Are we staying in Sacramento? Bloody earth we are. Let's go to Rashawn Holmes, the starting center of the Kings. Now, Again, people will look at this and go, bloody Luke Walton, why was he holding him back? And I do agree to a, to a certain point there. 
Holmes did have some has some issues with foul trouble. He's had some ejections in this time, but he's only playing 27 minutes a night, and he's the 85th ranked player over the last two weeks. I don't need to see Tristan Thompson or Alex Len getting these minutes that they have been. Holmes, I think, should be able to get to 30. He's also, in this time, shooting just 71% from the line. He can be an 80% free throw guy, but it really is the minutes that, that stand out to me with Rashawn um, that can push up. He's averaging just 12 and 9, but over the course of the season, he's the 44th ranked player. I think top 50 for him is pretty clearly uh, going to happen. Um, I think top 30 is a possibility. If he played 31 a night, he'll do that. Does Elvin Gentry run him a little bit more? I would hope so. He's a high energy pick and roll lob threat type of player. Gentry's had a lot of success with that in the past. I just think you know, give him two extra minutes, 29 to 30, uh, the numbers jump straight up. Again, much like Pirtle, he's not necessarily this highly established guy with this long track record. And that does give you some leeway. So in terms of getting Rashawn Holmes, if you trade a top 70 player for him, a top 60 player, I think that's going to end, uh, allow you to end up in front. And then this guy, didn't expect to see him, Miles Bridges, on the buy-low show. At the start of the year, if I'd have told you Miles Bridges was ranked 62nd, you would have shit, he's, oh man, that's awesome, man, what a bargain. But with how he's played this year, this is actually a disappointment. He is 30th in points league, so it's not really impacting him. So why is he so low in category leagues? Well, it's two obvious reasons. 68% from the free throw line and 29% from three. Will he be able to maintain that insane start where he was in hitting 40% of his threes? Probably not. But this guy is not a 68% free throw guy. I think he's at 75 for the season, and even that's low. Like, he's like 80 plus. So there is still, like, while he had that big breakout, there are people who go, maybe flash in the pan. Or oh, maybe it's worn off. He's still getting like 37 minutes a night. Gigantic usage. Field goal percentage is great. Assists are up. He's still getting steals and blocks. All that is fine. It's just that the free throws aren't going in and they're on pretty big volume and the three-pointers aren't going in and they will improve. I would be looking at Miles Bridges again as a clear top 50 player, probably a top 40 player. And at the moment, he's just dropped off. And people, there'll be some people who have him and go, oh, well, it was nice while it lasted. Maybe I can cash him in for a top 60, top 70 guy. And then he'll go back to being a top 80 player. Some people will think that, not everyone, but some people will think, they'll see that hot start and go, well, that was, that's like the Al Horford hot start. Yeah, it wasn't real. It's not going to continue. And we're seeing him settle back in as being the 60th or 70th best player. If you can get it, if, even if a top 50 player, if you can send for Bridges, I reckon you're going to win by, um, by doing that. So, guys, that'll do it for today's show. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Odyssey. Check out Locked on Hornets as well to hear them talk about Miles Bridges, Walker and Nada over there talking Hornets five days a week. Also on YouTube, give me a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe, notification bell. All that stuff is great, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.